Salahuddin, it's a pleasure to have you here. I think uh, you have a full plate uh, uh, with uh, your consulting, with your entrepreneurship, and now with the highly successful book being now converted, as you said a little while ago, into a screenplay and hopefully very soon a movie. Uh, let's share, uh, start from the book itself. Mm -hmm. What made you write this book? May I? Oh, okay. Uh, the, uh, well, the, actually it was an experience. I not long since uh, watched a movie called Les Miserables. Now, that's a French story, but it's got a very internationally human dimension to it. It uh, looks at different worldviews about, uh, you know, being a, a born criminal versus uh, uh, you know, nature versus nurture, in other words. Um, it's got uh, uh, issues of turning the tables in terms of power relationships. A number of different interesting, uh, you know, the man on the wrong side of the law but the right side of humanity versus the right side of the law and the wrong side of humanity. So all of these factors I sort of distilled and I said, you know, there's a story to be told along similar lines but having to do with the modern era about Guantanamo in particular and the experiences that have been, you know, had there. Wouldn't it be nice to have a story that has some of the same themes at a very visceral human level, uh, but is cast in those terms of the modern era? Uh, and so that's, uh, that was not as intellectual a process as I've just made it sound. It was one evening I'd had that sort of light bulb idea, and six weeks later a novel was complete. Uh, so it was a real you know, volcanic experience. And that, that to my mind, is, uh, is what really fueled the... Uh, but, but having said that, Having grown up as a Muslim, a Pakistani, in most of my life in a non-Muslim, non-Pakistani environment, uh, I also got a lot of my feelings that had accumulated over the years to be channeled into this experience. And I think that's what really rounded out the, the book. So, uh, if I'm not wrong, it has been very well received. Uh, Alhamdulillah, it's received uh, two grand prizes, the LA Book Festival and the Paris Book Festival. It's uh, won the National Indie Excellence Awards for uh, Multicultural Fiction. Uh, it won the uh, Beaches Book Festival and the Hollywood Book Festival uh, in fiction. Uh, so yes, and it also got the Care Chicago 2012 Award. Uh, so I was very, since it was my first novel, it was very gratifying to have had that reception for it. You know, having uh, grown up uh, you know, and spent most of your adult life in the UK and now you're based here in Chicago, um, uh, you have experienced both the cultures, uh, which are very similar in some cases, which are not very similar in the other ones. But as a Muslim, do you feel that you are as Brit, as American, as the next door neighbor? But as a Muslim, uh, is there a continued challenge to prove yourself that you are part of the fabric, whether you are growing up in England or you are here contributing to the society here in the States? I, I think you become something of an observer as an outsider. And so you get to figure out what, what's the way to accommodate and adapt uh, within the society you're in. You become something of a chameleon, I would say, to some extent as well. Uh, but throughout all of that, experience, I think I've managed to retain my own identity. Uh, and it's a complex identity. It's, uh, you know, it's a Westerner's identity in some respect and it's very much a traditional Pakistani slash Muslim identity in many other respects. So I, I don't think I can say I am a American or, a, you know, I'm not an American citizen, by the way, um, or a, a Brit, which I am a British citizen. But I kind of it's, I am my own thing. I don't, I don't think I can sort of describe it in any other way. You know, before this current wave of immigrants, now that you have Muslims coming here, you have the Vietnamese and the Chinese and the Koreans. Before this, uh, they had, there was a wave of Irish and Italians. So they're always bracketed into some category or the other, uh, ethnically. So they always had this struggle for the first two generations, they said, then it takes over. Yeah. But England, I think, in some cases, is third and fourth generation of, of uh, immigrants from India and Pakistan now. Uh, do you see some parallels between oh, what... Definitely. Yeah, I, I think immigrants of any kind uh, generally evolve so socially in, in waves. The first is just mean, being able to derive an income. And in the UK, for example, a lot of that was through manual labor. So the first generation is a manual labor income focused group. What they want their kids to do is productive, uh, high earning professional jobs like doctor, engineer, lawyer, that's the cliche. 
the next generation that's following on from that is uh, going into uh, liberal arts, thought leadership, uh, and I think art is always a very, very important area to be in. Uh, and I think that the, the last stage is perhaps political engagement. And you see a lot of that in, in England. Uh, you've got a lot of MP, MPs now and a few you know, members of the Houses of Lords. Uh, and in local government, you've got a, quite a, a bit of it. So I think that's the indication of the maturation of the presence of that community. Let's uh, turn focus to your uh, entrepreneurship and your strategy consulting portion. Uh, uh, what I wanted to t uh, ask you is, when you are consulting, I'm trying to again draw some parallels, because everybody, uh, at least in, in terms of growing and scaling, uh, you want to be like Americans. So you have done this in England. and So how do you compare the corporations and the clients that you've addressed, the, the key issues that you try to address, the same issues here in this country? Are there some cultural comparisons or in what ways is this different or better? I think actually in a larger number of ways it's similar, to be quite fair. Um, there are just a few cultural differences that you can expect. I think that the fact of the American history having been a multinational, multicultural one uh, has made a difference. I think the speed of decision making tends to be higher here. Uh, I think the scale of, of value, the, 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 the price that is put on a consulting hour or day is generally speaking higher in this country. Um, I think there's uh, a tendency to want to use consultants a bit more readily for a given problem than to simply hire one's way into solving it. So those are some of the differences I could point to. When you look at uh, consulting through uh, uh, a guy who is focused on strategy, uh, I just want to draw some anecdotes from you to understand you know, how the current, uh, since especially because we are here in Silicon Valley, technology plays a big role here. And how do other corporations and your clients try to uh, absorb this technology, which is more startup focused, agile, nimble, and try to scale their corporations? Uh, you know, my experience is in, in, in very different scales, uh, from startups to, uh, you know, major corporations, um, multi-billion Fortune 50 kind of companies. And it's all, it's all pretty different, frankly. I've, I've helped do product formulations and product designs for large corporations, and I've helped with corporate strategy for small companies. Uh, each has their own specific challenges, and you have to, uh, any good consultant has to understand the available dynamics in their client to be able to affect the recommendations that one is making. They have to be practical from the point of view of the scale of the enterprise. And so that's been the, you know, it's an important part of what constitutes a good strategic consulting. And, uh, you know, I think you've got to be sensitized to that. And once you are, then you come up with recommendations that make sense for that scale of enterprise. In fact, for those particular people, in many cases, for the small enough enterprise, the individual personalities are very, very critical, uh, much more so than in a large corporation. I think finally uh, I have uh, all the best wishes and we can't wait to watch the movie whenever it's made. Uh, you and me both, man. Thanks. <laughs>